Most of us have either a checking or savings account that pays some form of interest. Most banks use a formula called compounded interest to calculate the interest they pay you each month. This video will address how you use compounded interest to solve interest problems. Let's take a look at the formula first. Here it is. It looks if a principal P is invested at an interest rate I expressed as a decimal and compounded n times a year, in t years it will grow to the amount a. A reword of this uh, with maybe some simpler language. p is the starting amount or the initial investment. i is the interest rate that must be expressed as a decimal. Remember to convert a percentage to a decimal, we must remove the percentage symbol and divide by 100. N is the number of compounds per year. So if it's compounded quarterly, N would be four, since there are four quarters in a year. Compounded monthly, N would be 12, and so on. T is time, but it must be in years. So of course, if two years, T would be two. But let's say they told you the time was 18 months. 18 months would be a year and a half, or 1.5 years. And lastly, A is the amount after the given time. Let's take a look at a couple of quick examples. Suppose that you invest $1,000 at 8% interest compounded quarterly. How much is in the account at the end of three years? Okay, let's set this up. What would our principal be? Again, principal is the starting amount or the initial investment, so that's $1,000. Times the quantity 1 plus I, the interest rate as a decimal, 8% as a decimal would be 0 0.08. Now this is compounded quarterly, so N would be 4 and then we're raising this to the power of n times t well, we already said n was 4 t is time in years so 3 now let's take a look at this for a moment this may seem kind of odd but essentially what we're doing is we're getting common units what I mean by that is this if we take 8 percent annual interest rate and divide it by 4 we're essentially getting a quarterly interest rate and if you multiply 4 times 3, that would be the number of quarters in 3 years. So essentially what we're doing here is we're putting everything in quarters. Okay, let's go ahead and go to the calculator and simplify this expression on the right side. So we're going to enter it in pretty much just as we see it. 1,000 times the quantity 1 plus point. 0, 0.8 divided by 4 and that's going to be raised to the uh, 4 times 3 power I'll put 4 times 3 in parentheses oh, of course I could just put 12 and that's pretty much all we have to do this gives us A or the amount after 3 years so it's $1,268.24 one thousand two hundred sixty eight dollars twenty four cents it's a pretty straightforward example of compounded interest now the next example what I want to do is compare what is going to happen to this balance if we change just one condition we're going to change how often it's compounded instead of compounded quarterly Let's take a look at what are we going to do if it's compounded daily. Same starting amount, same interest rate, 
same amount of time. And we'll see the difference. Okay, so let's write out our formula. Uh, the amount after three years will be equal to the principal, still a thousand, times the quantity one plus the interest rate as a decimal. We're supposed to divide this by n. If it's compounded daily, we assume there are 365 days in a year. We raise this to the n times t power. 365 days times 3. Again, we have a daily rate here, and we have the number of days in 3 years here. Let's go back to our calculator and determine this amount. You might be thinking, uh, which will give you more money? One nice thing about the graphing calculator is, instead of retyping everything that I just did, if I hit second enter, it brings back the last expression, except now what I can do is I can go back and edit uh, anything I want. And so the only change is from changing this 4 to 365. Now 4 is a single digit, so I can overwrite the 4 with the 3. Now I have to insert the 65. Second delete is the insert, and get the 65. Of course I could just delete everything and retype it. Uh, but I'm trying to save a little bit of work here. And I'll do the same thing with this 4. I'll overwrite the 4 with the 3, and then I'll insert the 65. And if we compare these amounts, this amount is $1,271 and roughly 22 cents. And as you can see from the previous problem, we had 1,268. So the amount has increased. And hopefully that makes sense because if you're being paid interest on a daily basis instead of a monthly basis, uh, the more money you get paid the more often, the better off you would be. Now this may not seem like a big difference, but of course if you're dealing in millions and billions or even trillions of dollars, uh, it would add up. Okay, that's pretty much uh, how you deal with compounded interest. I hope that helps, and I'll leave you with a thought.